Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to welcome you, Thank you. home to your Thank own you. your old stomping grounds. It's a pleasure to see Bill Robinson. I mean, Bill Rosendahl, our colleague. With you. Great, great, great. It's all, right. it's all right. You had basketball players on your mind, right? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Mr. President. It's always wonderful to come back to Chambers, and thank you, members, for receiving all of us here today. And I want to thank, uh, start by thanking you, uh, Mr. Council President Herb Wesson, our, our controller, Ron Galpern, who's joined us as well, and City Attorney Mike Feuer, who I know is going to be here if he's not here already. And, of course, Council Members Bonin and O'Farrell, and all my colleagues here on the City Council for hosting this incredible celebration of our city's proud LGBT community. Absolutely. <laughs> Harvey Milk once said that all young people, regardless of sexual orientation or identity, deserve a safe and supportive environment in which to achieve their full potential. And that's what our LA is about. This is the most welcoming, diverse city that's ever been put on one place on this globe in the history of humanity. It is what we celebrate here today. The spirit of Los Angeles is a spirit that celebrates that diversity. We're stronger for it, we know it, we cherish it, and we welcome all who wish to be who they are. Folks come here because they know Los Angeles is the most creative spot on the face of the earth. But oftentimes they come here because they're fleeing things like war and discrimination, uh, the lack of economic opportunities, and they come here where they know they won't be judged by the color of their skin, the language they speak, the country of their origin, whom they love, what they wear, who they are. And our young people need heroes. The only thing that matters in L.A. are the dreams that you have in your heart, your gut's willingness to work hard to obtain it, and the mind that sets that yourself to that goal and marches towards it. Our young people need heroes to pave the way. That is what Harvey Milk did in politics, and that's what Jason Collins is doing in professional sports. So let's hear it for Jason, who became the first publicly out athlete within the four major pro sports leagues. He is an LA native, uh, we went to the same high school, so I'm very proud of that. And he, he is such an inspiration for LGBT youth across the nation, and his openness is helping shape the values of millions of Americans across the nations. And to all of our honorees, it's great to have June Lagme, for instance, back here, who served us so well as our city clerk, and Rabbi Denise Eg Egger and Rabbi Lisa Edwards, who both set the bar and who have inspired us, not just in terms of social justice, but spiritually as well. Minion Moore, who I went to college with, and her spouse, Elaine Harley, who's here. Uh, Carlos Sosa, who continues to get the word out on those things that we need to know throughout the city. During June, I've asked uh, this coming month that City Hall will be bathed in lavender light, a beacon that declares that this city is a city of light for anyone, regardless of race, religion, creed, or orientation. And now, it is a great honor to introduce our next speaker, another trailblazer who was elected as our city's first LGBT citywide elected official, at least openly, who knows in the past, and the first <laughs> neighborhood council leader to be elected citywide, our incredible controller, a man who's a little shy, so welcome him, Ron Galpern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ron's a little shy, okay. Good to see you, Mr. Controller. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. Thank you to our council president, to council members Mike Bonin, Mitch O'Farrell. I also understand that our city attorney is going to be here, and to all the uh, members of the city council for inviting us to be here today to celebrate LGBT heritage in L.A. You know, it's less than a year ago that I had the honor of being inaugurated as controller of the city of Los Angeles. I remember that day so very well, and we were actually lining up as we were about to walk down the stairs, and I had never really given much thought to what that process was going to be like. So there we were lined up, and I saw the council members, and each of them started to take each other's hands, including the two council members who are to my left and to my right, along with their respective spouses. And there I was with my husband, Zach, and we hadn't really thought about what we were going to do. And we kind of looked at each other, we had stuff in our hands, and we fumbled for a moment, and uh, then we took each other's hands, and then we walked down 
to the podium where I was about to be inaugurated. It felt like one of these most natural kinds of things to do, and I hadn't given it much thought, and yet it ended up having such a profound impact, I have to say, on my life. And then I spoke to people all over the city who saw three sets of couples walk down that were same gender, hand in hand, in the city of LA to get inaugurated. And what an amazing moment that was, and what that says about the city of Los Angeles and about this incredible diversity that we celebrate here today. I and we're going to celebrate that in our honorees as well. So I want to introduce a man who is not only carrying on Harvey's legacy, Harvey Milk, that is, who, who was referenced by the mayor, but also is serving proudly and openly, who knows firsthand that, happen, that change happens block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood. This is true for both of the council members who are here. And I'm going to begin by introducing council member Mike Bonin, a friend and just a great leader for our city. Thank, Thank you. you very much. No tie, Bonin. No tie, believe it or not. Uh, good morning, colleagues, and good morning, everybody who's here today. We have come a long way, baby. The change has been rapid and phenomenal. Just over 10 years ago, just over 10 years ago, marriage was legal for same-sex couples nowhere in the United States. And today... I literally need a scorecard to figure out what the latest state is where the walls of discrimination are tumbling. Yes. There, there literally is not enough time to thank everyone who helped build the movement that got us to where we are today. But I want to thank a few. I want to thank every single grassroots activist who took to the street. I want to say thank you to every single person who was living paycheck to paycheck but made a donation to the cause anyway. I want to say thank you to every straight ally who said no more to inequality. I want to say thank you to every single person, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender, who found their courage burst open a closet door and told their story to friends and loved ones. I want to thank every person who listened to their heart and fought for their love and made equality happen. It is you, it is you, you who forced our spring. And I want to thank all of those who realize that the struggle isn't over and those who continue to fight for it, who remember that we need to stand up and fight against bullying and against hate crimes. We need to stand up for an employment discrimination bill at the federal level that is actually real and actually protects our community. Right. Yes. We need to stand up for transgender equality and realize that there is a T in LGBT. And we, we, we need to not stay silent. And we need to stand up for the civil rights and the lives of our sisters and brothers in other countries who are being tortured, imprisoned, and even killed for simply being who they are. And we need to thank those who remember, and there are many here, that the fight for social justice is more than just the LGBT community, that none of us are free unless all of us are free, and that our community, with as many victories and rewards as we have had, need to join the fight for everybody's equality. Yes. Yes. You know, the mayor just pointed out to me, I don't get to be a, a groundbreaker. There have been gay and lesbian council members before me. I'm not even the first from the 11th district. <laughs> Bill Rosendahl is here, by the way. I don't even get to be the only gay guy on the city council. Because I am so lucky and so privileged to serve with a guy who was elected at the same time, 
who is as pure of heart and as concerned about his community as anybody I know. I'm proud to call Mitch not just a colleague, but a dear, dear friend. Mitch O'Farrell, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mitchell? Mike, right back at you. It, on every level, thank you so much. So you know you made me tear up a little bit. <laughs> Darn it, I didn't want this to happen. Okay, so I want to thank our friend in the, in the state legislature, Assemblymember Jimmy Gomez, who is standing yeah, give to our Jimmy right. a round of applause. He's here with us. Uh, I know that the L.A. Gay and Lesbian Center, they're on the AIDS ride. So Lori Jean sends her regards. The whole organization uh, is with us in spirit today. I understand we have LSD school board member Bennett Kaiser, another ally in this great movement. Yes. We have representatives from uh, uh, House Speaker Tony Atkins' office here, a, an open lesbian first House Speaker in the, in the State Assembly. Uh, we also have a representative from Adam Schiff, Congressman Adam Schiff's office, and a representative from uh, Assemblymember Richard Bloom here in the House today. Good morning, Mr. President, colleagues. Let me just tell you, it is great to be gay in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Before I make my remarks, I want to thank the organizing committee, uh, especially members of my staff. Uh, and it was a daunting task to organize this day. And I want to especially thank co-chair Tony Aranaga, my communications director. Tony's here. Also on the team of about 15 people uh, on my staff includes William Ayala, William, Gigi Galias, David Hiron, and Dan Halden. It is such a great honor to represent the 13th District in the city of Los Angeles, and I'm going to give L.A. just a quick little history lesson here, because it was where it all began. 1950, the LGBT organization that started the liberation movement in the United States formed in the living room of a Silver Lake resident, Harry Hay, it was called the Mattachine Society. 1966, 1967, the Black Cat protests in Silver Lake were organized after two men had the audacity to kiss in the bar on New Year's. This protest preceded the Stonewall riots in New York by two and a half years. 1970, the first Los Angeles area gay and lesbian parade happens on Hollywood Boulevard between Highland and Vine. 1979, a different light bookstore opens in Silver Lake, the first different light uh, and the first bookstore of its kind to cater to the LGBT community. 1993, Jackie Goldberg is elected to the district, the first lesbians to serve on the Los Angeles City Council. And last year I had the great honor of being the first gay man elected to this seat. So we stand here today honoring our present day pioneers in this movement. Jason Collins, the first major league athlete to come out as gay during his career, by being out proud and secure in who you are, you have helped make it okay for other professional major league athletes in the traditionally macho environment to be more accepting while paving the way for other LGBT athletes to come out. Your stated goal is to empower others, empower others you have by the millions across the United States. Jason, thank you. Mignon Moore and Elaine Harley, by living as a visible example as a loving couple and mentoring other LGBT families across the demographic spectrum and bringing the plight of LGBT seniors into light, you are transcending all antiquated and destructive notions still held by mainstream America of what it means to be lesbian, gay, or transgendered. Congratulations. June Lagmay, June Lagmay, what can we say? By always living as who you are as a public service professional, then as general manager of a Los Angeles City Department, for countless city workers and Angelinos everywhere, you daylighted the futility of fear, ignorance, and bias against our community. Congratulations, June. Go, June. <laughs> Rabbis Lisa Edwards, 
Rabbi Denise Egger, by virtue of your devotion to spiritual life for 20 years and, and longer, you have shattered any false concepts that, like all human beings, we are spiritual in nature, and we will assert our place in all faiths across this great nation, breaking down any barriers that diminish who we are spiritually, socially, or professionally. Congratulations, rabbis. <laughs> Carlos Sosa, my friend, you have been a champion of our LGBT youth since your own youth. The group you founded in 2005, City Times One Youth Group, has given hope to thousands of young men, women, and our transgendered youth between 14, from as, as young as age 14, many of them homeless. These are oftentimes, and tragically, young people that have been discarded by their families, by society. By organizing social gatherings in a safe, supportive environment, these young people realize they matter, they have, that they have value, and that we want them to have a fulfilling life with all the opportunities that everyone else has. Carlos, you have always operated below the radar. That is integrity, helping to save society while no one else is looking. I am taken by your profound connection to, our, to your mission and your laser focus to help arguably the most disadvantaged population in the entire LGBT community. It's a great honor to be standing amongst everyone here, our mayor, our city controller, and our city attorney. Thank you so much and congratulations, honorees. And now our city attorney, Mr. Mike Fuhrer. Thank you, Mitch. You got it. Thanks, Mitch. You know, when one wonders what is most significant about events like today, I think what's most significant is what it teaches our kids here in Los Angeles. Because it says to kids that your sexual orientation need never be a barrier to achievement. You ought to feel good about who you are. Stand up for what you believe in. And recognize, as Mitch said a moment ago, the tremendous value you have. This recognition conveys that very strongly to our kids. You know, this city council has played a significant leadership role on the issues we celebrate today not just today or yesterday, but for decades. I remember back in the 1990s, members of this council stood up for marriage equality when it was far from a popular thing to do. Stood up not only against hate crime, but also in moments that were controversial to say, for example, that no organization, including the Boy Scouts, should marginalize a parent or a child because of their sexual orientation. Right. Yeah. This, you know, I, we think about civil rights. What, are, what is at the core of what we mean when we talk about civil rights? Today, it's the right to marry whom you choose. It's the right to be free from bullying on a playground or on the way to school. It's the, right, it's the right to have any job for which you are qualified. Your sexual orientation has nothing to do with whether you are qualified. It is for all of us, I think, a recognition that as a society, we measure ourselves by the dignity and humanity we express through our laws and through our deeds every day. This is a celebration that matters to every resident of the city of Los Angeles. And I want to congratulate each of our honorees for being the trailblazers you are, and the colleagues in elective office with whom I'm standing today, many of whom have broken barrier after barrier to be able to say to everybody in Los Angeles, every one of us has the potential to rise and lead and succeed. Thanks very much. And now on to our wonderful honorees. I'd also like to, by the way, uh, recognize our assistant chief of police from LAPD, McCarthy, 
and let's give her a round of applause. And Chief Featherstone. And Chief Featherstone as well, who is here. I'm very pleased to introduce two of our honorees, Rabbi Lisa Edwards and Rabbi Denise Egger. Now, as many of you know, my own husband is a rabbi, so I know that they will forgive me when I say that they're my second favorite rabbis. <laughs> now, my husband, Zach, often says that the job of a rabbi is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comforted. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I, I've known these two rabbis for somewhere around 20 years now. They're incredible role models, they're heroes, they're dear friends, and they do an incredible job of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comforted as well. Comforting individuals and families in need of counsel and help, comforting members of the LGBT community who may have been less than fully welcomed everywhere else, providing sanctuary literally and figuratively, serving as teachers and leaders with love and tenderness and caring, celebrating life's milestones with couples and families of all sorts, weddings and births, anniversaries, and also I've seen them afflicting the comforted, standing up for social justice in the face of discrimination, prodding people along, working to repair the world, telling the truth even when it's not popular, serving as teachers and leaders again, but with strength and tenacity and with great purpose, and getting more comfortable folks in their congregations to give up some of what they have for those in need. It's all about comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comforted. So let me begin with Rabbi Lisa Edwards. We got to give Rabbi a round of applause. Rabbi Edwards has been a Jewish lesbian activist from the pulpit, on the page as an author, on the web, in the classroom, and in the streets of LA for more than two decades. She is in her 20th year as rabbi of Los Angeles congregation Bet Chaim Chadashim. She started at age five. <laughs> Bet Chaim Chadashi means House of New Life, and it was the first synagogue in the world founded exclusively for gays and lesbians, and now, of course, bisexual, transgender, straight, everybody. It's progressive, it's diverse, it celebrates Jewish life, but it also celebrates the life of Los Angeles and of every faith. Rabbi Edwards was ordained at Hebrew Union College and also holds a PhD in literature which may account for the references as diverse as Shakespeare and modern poetry, not to mention New Yorker cartoons, that enrich her sermons. She has seen the harm done to LGBT individuals when discrimination is preached by religious authorities and practiced by families in communities of faith. And she has worked and succeeded greatly in counteracting that damage. From the AIDS crisis to marriage equality to protecting the environment to highlighting sacred texts. Rabbi Edwards is a sought-after speaker, teacher, writer, clergy person, and an amazing advocate and friend. Most of all, she is somebody who understands the struggles of her congregation and speaks to the hearts of not only the members of her congregation, but of everybody here in Los Angeles. I am so proud to be honoring my friend, Rabbi Lisa Edwards. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I need a new wall. We also have one of these beautiful handy dandy certificates. <laughs> Honored to be sharing this with my teacher, Rabbi Denise Eger. 42 years ago next month, a handful of gay and lesbian Jews in Los Angeles held their first Sabbath service together 
and began laying the groundwork for a congregation that, in the language of the time, referred to itself as the homophile Jewish community. <laughs> 42 years ago in Los Angeles and in the Jewish world, there was good reason to form such a congregation. Then and still now in too many places in the world, queer is not used in the cheerful way it is used in this room today. <laughs> Los Angeles and Judaism each have had more than their share of laws and customs that permitted discrimination of all sorts, including violence against people who look different or love differently or live in what some call the shadows. I doubt the founders of Beit Chaim Chadashim, House of New Life, our congregation, ever imagined that 42 years after they started it, that BCC would be a thriving congregation of families and individuals of all ages, sexual orientations, gender identities, <laughs> that BCC would be a have a beautiful new building in the city of Los Angeles and a commitment to city and to community that keeps BCC woven into the fabric of Los Angeles and of the queer community and of the Jewish people. I am here with you today because those founders dreamed and invited everyone who has come along since to live their own dreams. The result, barriers are erased while diversity is embraced. If you doubt that, think about where we all are right now, right here, and the reason we are all here. I don't mean to suggest the work is over, all goals and hopes and dreams achieved, far from it. But I am grateful to live in this time and in this place, and to be given the opportunity to be a teacher and an encourager, to nurture courage within the hearts of people, to own our Judaism, to study it, to live Jewish lives, to be dreamers and activists, to use our tradition and our teaching and our teachings for their intended purpose, to inspire us to work in partnership with God and with each other, to make our shared world a place worth sharing. I'm so honored to be in this good company today. Thank you all. to get the right piece of paper here. Rabbi Denise Egger was raised in Memphis, Tennessee, graduated with honors from the University of Southern California with a bachelor's degree in religion, received her master's from Hebrew Union College, and was ordained as a rabbi in 1988. And she received her Doctor of Divinity Honoris Causa in 2013 from HUC. <laughs> rabbi Egger also has served Congregation Beth Chaim Chadashim for four years before she became the founding rabbi of Congregation Kol Ami, which is West Hollywood's Reform Congregation. And she has served the LGBT and all the community of Los Angeles for more than 25 years. In 2013, Rabbi Egger was nominated President-elect of the Central Conference of American Rabbis which is the largest organization of rabbis, more than 2,000 reform rabbis worldwide. That's a big deal. In March of 2015, she will become president of that organization and the first openly gay and lesbian person ever to hold that position. She is also past president of the Southern California Board of Rabbis, and when she became president, she was the first, again, woman and the first openly gay person ever to do so. Amen. A real trailblazer. She was also the founding president of the Lesbian, Gay, and Bisexual Interfaith Clergy Association, served on the boards of the No on Night campaign, the No on Prop 22 campaign, and the Equality for All No on Prop 8. I'm looking forward to the day when we have yes on something, uh, but we are moving forward. Rabbi Egger has written many articles that have appeared in magazines, newspapers across the country, as well as appeared on numerous radio and TV programs. She's a noted speaker on the topics of human sexuality, GLBT issues, AIDS, changing families, spiritual health issues, Judaism and politics, progressive Judaism, the radical right. I could go on. She's also a fabulous mom, and I know that firsthand. So please join me in congratulating Rabbi Denise Egger, a wonderful friend, a great leader, 
a role model and a hero. Thank you. Amen. Wow. Thank you all for this uh, wonderful honor and for being recognized for LGBT Heritage Month. Uh, Mayor Garcetti, Controller Galperin, and honored city council members, elected officials and city staff and community members. The Book of Psalms teaches us that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And also it teaches this is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be happy in it. With joy and gratitude, I thank you for this tremendous honor from our beloved city. For more than 25 years now, I have served the LGBTQ Jewish community, and I've been blessed to serve and entrusted to lead. During the last quarter century, I've been so fortunate to minister with those with AIDS and HIV, to educate the members of our government, and in those early years, to protest when our government failed to act, and to comfort the sick, the dying, and their loved ones and survivors. I've had the privilege to work with transgender people, gay men, lesbian, bisexuals, and straight allies, people of every race, creed, and nationality, and people of no faith at all, to be part of change in history as we help win the LGBT equality in our city first with domestic partnership rights so long ago and adoption rights for housing and job rights, which we pray soon will be extended to everyone federally, and now with marriage equality. I've been witness to and a participant in extraordinary change and joined with so many of you to make uh, it an incredible city. I've worked to make Judaism an inclusive and welcoming religious tradition and have been involved in every corner of the Jewish world with discussing and teaching and urging acceptance and tolerance. And I've had the privilege of working with many interfaith leaders here in our city. So thank you. Thank you to the members of my congregation, Kulami, to my partner, Rabbi Eleanor Steinman, to my incredible son, Ben, who's away at college at Sonoma State, go Seawolves, um, <laughs> for supporting me as I work to lift up our city and our community with pride and with hope. There's still so much to do together. I look forward to joining with all of you towards a day when all the many diverse people of our city of Los Angeles can link arms and lift up all those who are impoverished, all those who've come to seek a better life in Los Angeles, when the, all those who live in the shadows without proper papers, when we as a city can create educational opportunities for all of our children of the city. This is the true test of equality and pride. When gay and trans and queer people everywhere will join with our neighbors to dream and to build up the city of Los Angeles, the city of angels. That is what I think gay pride should be holding our heads high and helping others to do the same. The late Maya Angelou wrote these words, whoever you are, wherever you are, start there. When we know better, we do better. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. You alone are enough. Once no so, so long ago, we were unable to tell our stories as LGBTQ people we were the rejected stone. But now I rejoice and thank you with all of you. We can do better and let us start together today. Shalom. Uh, so colleagues, we're very lucky. We have a lot of LGBT leadership within our city family. We've got Steve Simon from the Department of Disability. We've got Brenda Barnett at Animal Services. Uh, we've got John Zabo uh, at, the, at our library department. We've got Kevin James and Matt Zabo on the Board of Public Works. But we lost one of our leading LGBT members of the city family when June Lagmay retired. Uh, we're honoring June here today, and I wanted to say I have the privilege of introducing to you someone that you know, but I actually think I have the privilege of introducing to you someone that you don't really know. Uh, there's a lot about June I didn't know. I knew her as the incredibly 
efficient and professional aide to several mayors. I knew her as our incredible city clerk, and I knew her as a bit of a den mother to the LGBT family here in the city of Los Angeles. What I didn't know is how much of a long-term, lifelong pioneer for the LGBT community June Lagme has been. That she was out back at UCLA in the 1970s, where she first began to encounter discrimination as a lesbian. And as I understand it from uh, watching some of her, her history on video, she actually enjoyed that fight a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and that began a, a trend of picking some fights. Mm -hmm. um, but she, she was also one of the founding co-chairs of, uh, what was the name of the Asian Pacific. A Asian Pacific Lesbians and Gays, APLJ. The first uh, Which was the first Asian American LGBT organization. We all remember and celebrate the iconic figure that is Harvey Milk in San Francisco. But at the same time Harvey was running, there was a guy running for city council here, Don Amador. Mm -hmm. And his right-hand person was June Lagme, blazing trails at a time when it was unpopular, when it was unsafe, and it was uncool like it is today to be LGBT. What we may know about June is that she is blessed to have a wonderful partner, Rita. Yes. What we may not know is that they have been together 45 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> they met and fell in love in high school. And they likened their romance, at least June did in a clip I saw, uh, to the couple in Greece. June was the good girl always getting A's, uh, where Rita had a bit more of an edge. Um, uh, but this was during the, the flower power decade, and it wasn't uncommon for girls in Catholic schools to, to, to walk around hand in hand, uh, but they were trailblazers, and they married legally in 2008, finally getting the validation from the state that they'd had in their hearts and in their union and from their family and from their friends for so long. Uh, but I think the thing that is most remarkable about June is the way she goes about living her life and practicing her politics. Those of you who aren't LGBT may not have a sufficient appreciation of just how nasty our internal politics can be. They can be bitter, they can be divisive, they can get personal. June has always done things differently. In a clip that was made to, to honor her recently, she talked about she encourages the next generation to be true to themselves, but also to be nice. And what June has always done is something we all need to do more of, which is practice the politics of nurture and the politics of niceness and the politics of humility. In the long arc of seasons that is our fight for equality, we'd all be better off if it was always the month of June. <laughs> Mayor Garcetti, City Attorney Fewer, City Controller Galperin, honorable members of the City Council, please accept my profound thanks for inviting me back home to this chamber for this very humbling and loving recognition. I look around and I see old friends and new friends around the horseshoe. It feels so good. Congratulations to Jason, Carlos, Rabbi Edwards, Rabbi Eger, Mignon, and Elaine, warriors all of extraordinary courage for their outstanding activism and accomplishment. Also, I just found out today there is a newly formed LGBT City Attorneys Association here at City Hall. What a wonderful gift that is to have found that out. Uh, and while I'm here, a shout out to my peeps in the city clerk's office who are, of course, the greatest department in the world. Sorry, sorry. 
I was knocked by, for a loop when I was told about this honor, especially at this stage of my life where I am slowing down and entering a more private, reflective stage of my life. It is as though you are honoring me for the privilege of having lived a full and interesting life. I have been so lucky. I think back through the decades to when I was a young woman in my 20s, the seismic, life-changing history I was lucky to have witnessed firsthand, and the amazing generations of gay and lesbian leadership I was lucky to know and work with. From back in the day while I was at UCLA when the field of sociology confidently listed gays and lesbians in the scientific category of deviant behavior, when worshiping with the gay Catholic group Dignity meant meeting in secret in hidden mortuaries, witnessing firsthand the desperate unfolding of the AIDS crisis, the demonstrations against mainstream TV, radio, and uh, movies for disparaging reflections of our community, but who have today evolved to be our supporters and the beautiful, passionate activists I was privileged to meet, to work with Harvey Milk during the time of his climb to San Francisco supervisor, the great Morris Kite, whom I will always consider the grandfather of the modern LA gay movement, and to be enfolded by him and to have the privilege of eating at his table. Giants like the Reverend Troy, Troy Perry, Ivy Bettini, Jean Cordova, Jackie Goldberg, and many others who were the vanguards of the LGBT's era of most intense growth. As my dear friend Paul Chen likes to put it, back in the late 70s when he and I and others were involved in forming an organization to support Asian Pacific lesbians and gays in Los Angeles, probably we were too young to know any better. Maybe we were too naive to know we couldn't do it. And so I have lived to the astonishing day when marriage equality has become a reality and when the legislative leadership of the city now enjoys an overflow of representation from our community, a embarrassment of riches. So like a proud auntie, I am so proud of all of you, the new generation of LGBT leadership at the helm, and you know who you are. I wish you joy, blessings, and courage to be audacious and continue the good fight against homophobia, racism, sexism, and the worst sin of all, apathy. With my partner of 45 years, Rita Romero, and you know you got to stand up now. Mm -hmm. Stop taking pictures. Yeah. She has fought by my side with great bravery and great humor during the tumultuous landscape of our community's journey. From the bottom of my heart, thank you again. Oh. Now, colleagues, together. Well, I'll stand over here. You guys stand together. You've been together, and that's who you are. Uh, colleagues, I'm very glad today to, to honor Mignon Moore uh, and Elaine Harley or Hartley? Harley. Harley. Good, I got it right. Um, who I had the opportunity to meet just recently, about uh, four or five weeks ago. Uh, and I was determined to honor them here today because they represent something that is part of the fundamental change of the LGBT movement over the past several decades. We have, over the past decade, won the right to serve in the military, and we have, over the past decade, won the right in many places to get married. We have now begun to be a community that builds family. It isn't easy for us to build family the same way it is for heterosexual couples. It takes a little more effort, a little more intention, a little more planning. And Mignon and Elaine are a couple who have brought incredible intention into building a family and in sharing the love that they share with children. Uh, as far as I understand, their whole life is about family. They actually met at a family wedding, right? Yes. In 2002. Uh, and before they considered raising a child, they decided to create another type of family first, a family of choice by creating community networks for women of color, first in New York and then in California. When they lived in New York, uh, they formed an organization called Persuasion 
which was a social network for women of color of every persuasion. Once they moved west, they established chocolate and wine upscale events for women, which is a large and growing social group for lesbian, bisexual, and same gender loving women. And the communities they created there have helped forge a network of friendships and, and family across the nation. Uh, but that wasn't enough, enough for them. They wanted to, to create a family and have children, as so many of, of my sisters and brothers do. Uh, they'd already been involved in raising Elaine's son, but when, they got to call, when he got to college, they decided that they wanted to have babies. They wanted to raise children of their own. Um, after Mignon tried several assisted uh, technologies for uh, reproduction, they decided that they would go the adoption route. And they hooked up with an organization here in California called SCAFA, the Southern California Foster Family and Adoption Agency. And they went through the process of training and certifying to become foster adopt parents. Uh, they had a baby placed with them, and the baby was returned to their birth parents, which was a wrenching experience for them. But they decided to stick with the process. And now I'm delighted to say that they are the parents of two beautiful, lovely children. Baby Joy, who is 14 months, started walking just a couple days ago. Congratulations. And Baby Joy's biological brother, Ryan, who's now about five months, five months old. Uh, they joined the family uh, back uh, in, in, as infants as newborns, and both of them were premature at the time. And the effort and the love and the intention and the heart that these two strong, beautiful, incredible woman, women have brought to build that family is inspiring and is representative of the families that are springing up all around this state and all around this country as our unions are finally legalized and we can finally raise legally families of our own. Um, Mignon uh, teaches at UCLA, where she is a noted scholar on LGBT issues. Uh, she also serves on raiseachild.us's Honorary Advisory Council, where she helps make a difference for people who are going through the foster process. Uh, they have discovered through their social networks that incredibly high numbers of African American and Latino LGBT parents go through the foster to adopt process. Um, and they have been and will continue to be the role models for so many of those families. It was a joy to meet you. You're personally inspiring to me, and I am so glad to honor you here today on behalf of the City Council and the City of Los Angeles. Elaine and I are very happy to be here. We thank you very much for having us, uh, City Council. Uh, we have been proud to uh, uh, represent marriage equality through the Freedom to Marry or organization. Uh, we were married three times <laughs> in <know. laughs> different states, uh, legalized uh, same-sex marriage. Uh, we are here to support LGBT people and uh, same-sex couples who are raising children together. Uh, we're also here to represent those who uh, are having children through the foster adoption process. Uh, Los Angeles County has the largest number of foster children in the country, so there are many children waiting for loving homes, and we are, feel blessed to have uh, welcomed Joy and Ryan into our homes. Uh, we are happy to uh, have uh, um, given, uh, presented outreach to the Los Angeles women's community. Uh, we feel that there's a need for a greater visibility of African American and Latina and Asian Pacific Island and Filipino and women of color who are lesbian and gay and for our friends, uh, transgender women and men. And uh, we represent uh, uh, those organizations and those people and we are here to help bring social justice to our communities. And uh, we'd like to thank 
uh, Raise a Child U.S. and the Williams Institute and Freedom to Marry and the Southern California Foster Family and Adoption Agency, all of those uh, organizations in Los Angeles working to build community for our families. And we're honored to be here. We've been uh, married for two years and together for 12 years. And Los Angeles has been our home for eight years. And we thank you and we want to continue to make our communities visible. Thank you, colleagues. I just want to say that for everyone in this chamber, every city council member is on board with full equality. It's, it's uh, something that we all believe in, in lockstep, firmly. But I just got to highlight one of our colleagues, and that is Mr. Paul Koretz. Paul Koretz, please join us. Please join us, Paul. Someone who has been at the forefront of the movement since the early 1980s when he helped found the city of West Hollywood. With his time on the city of uh, West Hollywood City Council, his time in the State Assembly, and now his time uh, on the Los Angeles City Council, uh, Paul has been one of those quiet trail blazers uh, in the LGBT movement, and we thank you, Paul, and we would like for you to stand here with us in solidarity in a place of honor that you deserve. And I neglected to mention a member of my staff, and that's Harut Samurjian, who is also on the organizing committee, but his name didn't make it into the program. Harut, thank you. The uh, next honoree, I already talked about a little bit, so I'm, I'm going to be very brief, but I'm just going to say that Carlos Sosa is someone who has never believed that anyone, no matter what your age, no matter what your gender, no matter what your sexuality, should ever have to live life at the margins. Carlos founded City Times One, a nonprofit that serves our LGBT youth nine years ago. And as I mentioned earlier, on the down low, without uh, seeking any attention whatsoever, he has really helped save probably into the hundreds, if not thousands, of our most vulnerable youth with the organization uh, that he is executive director of and that he serves. So without further ado, our friend Carlos Sosa. Thank you. I, I really want to take this moment, and this is a beautiful moment. I've looked at this building from every corner of Los Angeles all the time, and to be here and be getting an award. I just want to look at everybody just real quickly. And as I do, please stand up and applause, not just for me, but for all the honorees and the upcoming 30 days of Gay Pride Month, because I got to take this moment in. <laughs> I got to see everybody from this angle over here. Great, thank you. Thank you to uh, Councilmember O'Farrell, to the mayor, for anybody who had anything to do with this, to know that we're having uh, LGBT Heritage Month is something great. It's something that we can all take pride in with our own community, with allies, and moving forward with the city in terms of reaching out to people and all of that about uh, all the wonderful services and uh, events that we have coming up for Gay Pride Month. Uh, back in 2005, uh, we founded City X1 because we looked at the landscape of all the services that were out there. A lot of great services, a lot of great organizations, a lot of good stuff going on, but it just wasn't working for us. <laughs> uh, nothing against anybody out there that was already doing their thing, but we just wanted to do it a little bit different with a little bit more style, with a little bit more sizzle. And uh, next year will be our 10-year anniversary, and you could find out information about it at cityx1.com. And what we do, what we're finding out and reaching out to LGBTQ youth is that a lot of the kids that were coming to our events were homeless. And these are great, wonderful, amazing kids that uh, took the courage to come out to their parents and say that, 
they're gay, they're bisexual, they're transgender, and they were told to get out of the house that same day, that same moment. A lot of them with no resources, uh, with no cash, it's like, get out of the house right now, I'm ashamed of you, or whatever. And in some cases, we've been able to uh, bring the kids back together with their families. In some cases, uh, the, the community, everybody that you see behind, we are their extended family. We are the family of these kids, so let them know that uh, it, you may not have an uncle or a parent or a dad or a mom that's supporting you in it, but all these people behind me do. And we are your community and we are your extended family. <laughs> Great, amazing kids that come from all of your districts, from all parts of Los Angeles. A lot of them uh, come down from, uh, from other counties as well. And we're glad to continue servicing them. And we will have our next event coming up on June the 29th. You can see what we do. CityX1.com. That's C-I-T-Y, the letter X and the number one dot com. Check us out on Facebook as well. And I would like to close by dedicating uh, this award to uh, Gail Roth and uh, Virginia Uribe and Nadia Sutton as well. I'm, I'm sure you guys know who they are. They're, they're very popular, very well known in the community. These three ladies have really taken me under their wing. I've sat on, on their learning tree the last couple of years, and they've put up with me a lot. Uh, and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for their love, their support, their attention. And times when, as Councilman uh, uh, Metro Ferro said, uh, we're under the radar. We're grassroots. We're not really operating with any grants or anything like that. So it's really th through our community who has brought sodas to our event or donated food or anything like that. And there's been times when I said, you know, it's too much. I'm getting tired. And these three wonderful ladies have... Uh, lifted me and given me their support and their love, their attention, their resources, so I dedicate this honor to them. Thank you. Our next honoree doesn't necessarily need an introduction, but I'm going to introduce him. A trailblazer in every way, but not to be mistaken with a Portland trailblazer. <laughs> he has single-handedly founded NBA Gay. It gives me such pleasure to introduce our next honoree who uh, just, just changed everything in professional sports, major league sports, while being an active player with the Brooklyn Nets, go Nets, he has come out of the closet and, and changed everything, the whole entire system, and made it easier for anyone who is um, gay in any major league sports or lesbian to come out and it's also made it easier for his teammates and teammates in major league sports across the entire system and spectrum to openly embrace their lgbt friends and family without further ado the very impressive and amazing jason collins and his parents are here too make sure and introduce them All right, mom and dad, you got called out. You got to stand up if you can't. Uh. I want to say thank you to the city of Los Angeles um, for everyone who had anything to do with this uh, great day. Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, very blessed to be here and honored uh, to be receiving this uh, honor from the city of Los Angeles with so many great trailblazers. Um, so many eloquent words uh, that were spoken here this morning. And I just want to add. I'm just inspired to be in such great company. Um, I hope that my actions 
will make it easier for the next person to come out. I realized that the road was paved before me by my idol, Martina Navratilova, Billie Jean King. Uh, Billie, there's so, the list goes on and on to uh, even recently Brittany Griner in the WNBA and Robbie Rogers, another athlete here in Los Angeles for the Los Angeles Galaxy. Um, and more and more athletes over time uh, will come out during their playing career. And I'm really looking forward to the future when it isn't a big deal, but we're not there yet. Uh, we're working, there are so many people who are working hard to improve um, the LGBT rights, equality. And I just, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of the conversation and to continue that conversation. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be short and sweet because I have to get on the golf course and practice my golf swing because tomorrow I'm playing in the LAPD Memorial Fund charity golf event at Brookside, <laughs> Country, Brookside Golf Club. Uh, my brother will be there too, and he's the golfer. So please don't arrest me for having an ugly golf swing. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Mitchell and, and Mike and, and uh, Ron, you have several uh, colleagues that would like to say a few words. And I, too, want to congratulate all of the honorees uh, that are here today. And is June still here? June, you look gorgeous and welcome home. Good, so good to see you again. And uh, Mr. Koretz, you are the first person on the queue, but I have a question for you. What speaker of the California State Assembly started the uh, LGBT caucus and funded it. Do you know what speaker that might have been? I, I'm going to guess, not that it's a guess, I know, it's Mr. Herb Wesson. Yes, it was. I did that. <laughs> Mr. Koretz, the floor is yours. Well, I, I congratulate all of our wonderful honorees and it's remarkable for me because I've been involved in this issue for almost 45 years. And I started being involved by not being involved. I saw some friends who were badly mistreated by uh, their high school classmates, and I didn't really know what to do about it. And there were no role models either for LGBT folks or for people that wanted to support them. Um, then in uh, my senior year, a fellow named Morris Kite, who's been mentioned before, um, came and spoke to one of my classes. And I got to realize that there were gay men that were living good lives and were actively um, supporting the cause of being able to be openly gay and, and to be treated better and without discrimination. And so... I started to get involved. I joined the Stonewall Democratic Club when it was founded. Um, I didn't really notice at the time, but I was the, the first straight man to join. And there weren't, there weren't a whole lot of them back then that were willing to be associated with, uh, with this particular issue. Um, there were a lot of ups and downs I've seen over the years. Uh, I got to participate in, in some of the ups, mostly ups. Um, only 30 years ago, there had never been an open lesbian that was mayor of an American city. And I had the honor and opportunity to run the campaign for Valerie Torino when the city of West Hollywood was founded almost 30 years ago. And she became the first open lesbian to be the mayor of an American city. And she also was the third of five gay and, uh, gay and lesbian uh, uh, members out of five, and so West Hollywood became the first majority gay council in the history of the, of, uh, the United States. 
Um, we had some downs too, like Prop 22. Um, I was elected to the State Assembly, ironically, because of Prop 22, because it, it created a huge turnout in the city of West Hollywood, and that actually helped my election, which is not the way I wanted to get elected. I was uh, very distressed by that. Um, one of the first things I did was I introduced a civil union mil bill in 2001, right after that. People thought I was crazy. Um, it was way too far a stretch, and it, it did go down in flames almost instantly. But amazingly, a couple of years later, Gavin Newsom was marrying people in San Francisco, and uh, Mark Leno and, and his co-authors, including myself, got a marriage bill passed um, in the state of California. And it's now uh, not far from becoming the law of the land in every state in the country. I can see that happening. So the progress has been amazing. There really, I think, are, are still only a couple areas that we still have a lot of progress to make. One is um, on transgender rights. And uh, I had the opportunity to carry a bill at the end of my assembly career about eight years ago that banned discrimination in health care against people who were transgender. And eight years later, uh, I just went up to Sacramento a couple days ago and found that just now they are finally going to implement that law. But even though it had passed, it took eight years to get it implemented. But we are now going to finally protect the uh, transgender folks in health care. Um, the other place I thought I would honestly never see us make progress um, was in professional male sports. Um, and I am so amazed at uh, what we've seen happen recently, and uh, particularly uh, if Jason is still here, uh, to say how amazingly courageous that is. Um, I can't imagine too many things tougher and more difficult, but uh, I think that is the, the last bastion of discrimination, and uh, I believe soon uh, that will be gone as well due to the courage of a handful of people like Jason. So it's been amazing to see, but I think we have made so much progress, and I am so proud that, that so many people have made this happen through, uh, through their great courage. And I'm proud to have uh, two openly gay colleagues uh, on the Los Angeles City Council. If you had asked me whether I would see that uh, 40 years ago, I never dreamed it in my wildest dreams. So uh, a lot of great things have happened, and I'm so proud to have seen it and to play a small role in it as well. Okay, Mr. Fuentes. Thank you, Mr. President, and congratulations to all of the honorees for uh, being here today and for your recognition, and obviously to my colleagues for the leadership that they're displaying here today. Um, you know, Los Angeles does have a rich history, and there are real I think milestones that need to be celebrated, which is why today is so special. You know, we know that, um, you know, Mitch mentioned that one of the first gay pride parades was here in 1970. We also know that the Metropolitan Church was one of the first churches in all of the country to, to congregate, inform, and celebrate together in the 60s and 70s. And now there's over 200 of these congregations across the country. And it started here in Los Angeles. We know that. The leadership here has moved its way to Washington, D.C. and into Sacramento, and as a result, we've had tremendous legislation, as Mr. Koretz mentioned, but I had the opportunity to work on legislation that offered protections against bullying on sexual orientation, gender orientation, and I was proud to serve with so many of my colleagues to that movement. And then I was particularly moved by some of the stories of my friends and family who wanted to grow the love for one another into their own families, which is why I authored Assembly Bill 1217, which amended the Uniform Parentage Act. It made it so that we could redefine what an intended parent was and what a parent is, and we made it gender neutral. So this way that parents, same-sex couples, same-sex parents, could have the same legal parental rights when they uh, endeavored to do so vis-a-vis vis -vis surrogacy. And it was uh, something that we did quietly, and I regret having been so sly about it, but we did it in a way that we were able to get Republican support, unbeknownst to them. And so I... Uh, I'm, I'm very honored to be here, and I think that uh, we've got a long way to go. Jason, you said that there's some things that, um, you know, sort of are obvious, but I think there's still so much that needs to be done. Just as recently as 2008, 
we saw the Proposition 8 on the ballot that said no to same-sex couples. And it wasn't until 2010 when it was deemed unconstitutional, and the appeals weren't exhausted until 2013. But one of the great things that came out of that campaign, that came out of that no on eight campaign, were four words that I live by that are, if you come to my home, they're posted on a wall every day before I leave my house and every time I come home to retire for the day. There are four words that uh, I think help us understand what this and so much that we need to do for our community are about. Defend equality and love unites. Thank you very much. Mr. LaBange. I want to congratulate all the honorees and welcome to the Grand City Hall. I also want to especially shout out to June Langmay, room 347, uh, back in uh, so many years ago when you started with the city with Peggy Stevenson. I want to give a shout out for Peggy Stevenson, who hired the first uh, openly gay deputy, Larry Ray, who lived in Atwater Village. I want to give a shout out to the Metropolitan Church right now and Reverend Neil Thomas. Get out there and wave. Just want to let you know. Hey, Neil, get out, wave. He's open every day, especially on Sundays. So I wanted to let you know. Good to see you, Reverend. It's in our district there, right across the street from yours. But also, a big shout out to my brother, Bill Rosendahl, who served this city so well. Ms. Martinez. Thank you, Mr. President. I could not be prouder of my colleagues. Um, the LGBT caucus of the city of Los Angeles, Mr. Galpin, uh, Mitchell Farrell, and Mike Bonin. I consider myself an honorary member, by the way. Um, I often talk about my parents um, and what an impact they've made in my life. Um, but one of the things that I am so thankful um, is that they instilled in my sister and I the acceptance of others at a very early age. And when I got to work with the LGBT community as a 15-year-old, um, talking about very serious issues like the spread of HIV and AIDS, and I saw friends of mine die, I couldn't be prouder of my parents and the sense of values uh, that they instilled in my sister and I to accept everyone, regardless of their gender and their sexual orientation. And And hate is not something you're born with. It is something you're taught. And so as a parent, as somebody who has fought alongside the LGBT community, I encourage all of our, all the parents in the audience and all of us who are raising children in this city to accept one another, to teach our kids that it's okay. It's okay and it's accepting to love everyone regardless of their sexual orientation. We have that responsibility and that duty to generations. And to all of you, thank you so much for your extraordinary courage. I am so proud to stand with you today. Thank you very much. Mr. Wizar. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, to our controller, uh, congratulations to you for breaking yet another barrier. And there will be more. There will be more. And thank you so much for getting together a wonderful group of honorees. And to Jason, I watched you playing uh, basketball at Stanford. I followed your career, except I rooted against you when you played Cal, my alma mater. But other than that, I loved watching you, and you're doing a great job, and another person breaking barriers. But I also wanted to mention my good friend, Bill Rosenthal, who my last seven or eight years on council and the time we served together, it didn't necessarily have to be an LGBT issue. Whatever public policy discussion we had, he raised that flag to make sure we were taking that into account. He was a pioneer himself in terms of the number of work, the work you did here in changing people's minds and promoting LGBT issues. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Bill, for the work you've done. We love you, Bill. And last but not least, Mr. President, I just want to note for the record, and if this could go into the record, when the mariachi came in, the song they were playing was La Marcha de Zacatecas, which is the state I'm from in Mexico, and also where the parents, where Ms. Martinez came from. So I just want to note that for the record. Thank you. Well, I, I really appreciate that, Mr. Wezar, because I've really, for 45 minutes, I was trying to get the uh, answer to that. So thank you for putting my mind at ease. Now I'd like to call on Mr. Bloomingfield to say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I just wanted to, to, to join into this celebration, let you know how proud I am of, of, 
of my colleagues taking leadership and how, how thrilled I am to be part of this, this momentous occasion. Um, hanging, hanging in my office, I don't know, a lot of you may not know, but there's, there is a, I have a, a bill that was signed in 1994 on, about the earthquake. And on it, the person I work for wrote, you know, Congressman Berman wrote, you know, thanks to you there's a, civil rights thing, there's a civil rights piece in it. I'm very proud of what's in that bill. And what a lot of people don't realize was the first time that sexual orientation was included as a protected class in federal law was the Northridge earthquake bill in 1994. Uh, and I was, I was very engaged in that, so proud of it that, that I keep that hanging in my office to this day and always have ever, ever since that bill was passed. So it's, it, for me, it's, it's an issue I take very personally. Um, it's really an extension of the civil rights movement. Um, and I know, I mean, as someone who's in an interracial marriage, I wouldn't have been allowed to marry my wife the year I was born in 1967. Uh, and and you, many of you wouldn't have been allowed to, obviously wouldn't have been allowed to marry each other then, but it has been an evolution and a revolution. And it's one that I'm proud that the city of Los Angeles is on the leading edge of, and we need to continue to be on the leading edge of. So I join my colleagues in this wonderful celebration and thank you for bringing, in, uh, bringing it forward today. Thank you, Mr. Uh... Bloomingfield, and the last thing I do want to say, Bill, it's always a pleasure to see you. And whenever there was a social issue, any social issue, we could all count on you standing uh, with us at our sides. So I appreciate you, and it was an honor to serve with you. To the, the rest of you, thank you for all that, that you have done. M just maybe one day, some of us might really get to see a time when people are judged on their deeds and their actions and not on how they look or who they sleep with. And, uh, Min Young, you're not the only person, you two are not the only people in this room that have been married three times. <laughs> but I'm not going to ask you to hold your hands up. But anyway, let's give another uh, uh, round of applause. Thank you so very much. It's an honor to have you all with us today. And there's a reception out in the forecourt that everybody is invited to, of course, after council, but the audience can come. Thank down. you so much, Mr. Bonin.